Hello everyone. Hope you're safe and sound at your homes. As the lockdown continues, I hope that we can keep our classes continuing. So I am uploading these videos to cover our syllabus. I'll try put I'll try and put a video on alternate days so we can cover our syllabus. We can have discussions in the comment section. So if you have any queries, uh, we can solve it. So let us begin. As the classes in the classes, I think we had finished up till unit four. We had finished with CPM. We had finished with PERT. Uh, we had finished uh, finished off with uh, the crashing of projects. So we'll move on to unit five, which is about inventory control. So let us start. In this video, what are the topics that we are going to cover? Is we are going to cover inventory. What is inventory? What are the reasons for it? What are the objectives of inventory? What are its pros and cons? And after that, we'll come to a single uh, one of the practices for inventory that is ABC analysis. We'll look at what is ABC analysis. We'll look at its advantages and disadvantages. So inventory is an American English word. Uh, in British English, it's also called a stock. Is nothing but the goods and materials that are required for the business for your ultimate goal, which may be of resale or repair or uh, even of manufacturing. That is nothing but your inventory. In short, inventory is something that it's the material that you require, okay, either in your production or you require it for sale that you keep it, uh, you brighten bulk and bulk and keep it. So that is nothing but your inventory. So how do we manage this inventory? That is nothing but inventory management. So inventory management is a discipline that is primarily about specifying the shape and placement of the stocked goods. So these goods that you keep in your uh, in your shop, in your factory, how do we keep them? What is the time when you order them? What is the quantity in which you keep them? That everything covers is covered under inventory management. So it is about uh, inventory is required at different locations within the facility. Uh, it may be required at uh, different places in your manufacturing centers. So that is why that is one of the reasons we keep inventory. So we'll have a look at the reasons why we keep inventory. The first reason is time. So what happens is you order something from a supplier and by the time it reaches to you, there are different stages at which it passes through. It passes through a number of traders. It passes through a number of middlemen. Every one of them takes their own time to supply this goods. So whenever you keep or buy, whenever you order something, it's not necessary that you get the order within the next day. Okay, it may take some time. So this time may not help industries because industries are running at a very fast pace and they want the products available uh, as soon as the machine starts. So that is one of the reasons we keep stock. We buy material that is required in bulk and keep it with us so that our production may not be hampered. The second reason is seasonal demand. So some of the products may be available only in a certain uh, season. Okay, so that is why we require to keep the inventory. We need require to buy the stocks of that particular goods in that particular season. For example, let's say Kisan makes mango jams, but the mangoes are available only in the months of uh, April, March to June, July. Okay, so around this four to five months, these are the only months in which the Kisan company can buy mangoes. So that is something seasonal demand. So they can buy mangoes in bulk during the season and then use it throughout the year to make their jam. Another reason is uncertainty. So inventories are maintained by the companies as a buffer to meet any uncertainties in demand in supply or movement of goods. Uh, certain uh, restrictions like we are facing now, uh, companies may not actually get mangoes. This Kisan company may not get mangoes this season. So they should have enough bulk uh, or bulk storage of the mangoes to keep their facility moving. Also, there could be a strike of the truckers in which the movement of the goods may be hampered. So this is called as uncertainty. So to overcome this uncertainty, companies also keep a large amount of inventories stored so that they can use it as required. The next reason is called as economies of scale. One thing that happens is when you buy materials in bulk, when you buy materials at a higher quantity, the, uh, the seller usually gives you a discount. So it's always cheaper to buy on buy any material in bulk in huge amounts. So this is called as economies of scale. So companies 
factories what they do is whatever items they want they bring it in bulk and then they can store it so that the cost of their final product will be less they can save a lot of money if they buy in bulk another thing is appreciation in value sometimes what happens due to market conditions a certain item may have a very low cost so this is the perfect time when you can actually buy a lot of material so they after a certain time these uh, these goods will the cost of these goods will appreciate so that is called as appreciation in value so these are the reasons why companies actually keep inventory moving on what are the objectives of inventory management so there are a few objectives uh, first thing it helps in minimizing the capital investment if you have a proper inventory management so what we do in inventory management is basically decide the amount of uh, material that is to be stored when it is to be bought when it is to be you know used in manufacturing all these things come under inventory management so what it does is it helps in minimizing the capital investment if you know the proper amount of material that is to be bought okay so if you know the proper amount of material that that is to be bought then you can you're not spending a lot of amount on it okay if you buy excess uh, stock than required you're spending a lot of money in it so your capital or your money gets locked in it which can be used somewhere else also all right so it helps us if in if you actually have a proper inventory management software it helps you in minimizing the capital uh, investment second thing it makes sure that there is no interruption in production if you have enough amount of material that is stored so there will be no interruption of production even if you are if you are not able to get your material if you will have your buffer in place it is a method that uses scientific way of calculating the entry, uh, inventory we are not talking about buying any inventory at random any random number of orders there is a scientific way of calculating it we calculate it using formulas you calculate it using mathematics and then we decide the amount of material that is to be bought the amount of goods that is to be bought when it is to be bought all this is a scientific way so that will actually help the fluctuations that are occurring in demand of the inventory can also be managed the demand for your inventory may be fluctuating some certain there could be a, a spike in demand of your inventory during certain seasons so this can be managed if you have previous if you have bought uh, the amount previously so that everything is covered under inventory management it also helps in deterioration uh, deterioration it also helps in deterioration and obsolescence can be avoided so basically if you buy material and keep it a long time it tends to deteriorate over time okay it can go obsolete in certain amount of time so if you this proper you have to buy proper amount of goods such that they do not deteriorate or they do not go obsolete in the time that is used for manufacturing so this everything can be avoided using inventory management now look at the pros and cons of inventory if you are looking at advantages it is cost saving because we discussed we can buying the right amount of material so it can help us save cost we are buying in bulk so again that is saving us cost it saves time so it saves time how because when we buy it we already have the material in place so we can directly start the production there is no uh, break in production and therefore it saves time it also increases your efficiency your workhouse is organized properly your data is updated properly because you know when the material is coming when the material is going on you have data security you have you are secure about your data so you can look in the trends you have insights in the trends so you can understand when the prices of a product are rising when do they fall what are the seasonal variations for it all these can be looked when you have all the data that is present uh, your production is uninterrupted we discussed that you will have adequate stocks as and when required okay you will have the optimization of inventories your inventories will be optimized they will have they will be in a perfect amount that uh, you can use in your industry it minimizes the losses and it is also economical so these are the advantages it has a very few disadvantages one thing is that it is expensive yes you are buying something uh, a lot uh, in a higher quantity you are uh, spending a lot of money in it it is complex you will have to do certain calculations you will have to understand the markets 
uh, and then you have to buy it and limited elimination of business risk uh, business is still you know it has its own risks and only a smaller part of that risk is eliminated so these are the disadvantages of keeping stocks moving on we'll look at one of the methods that is kept that is used uh, in inventory management and that is called as abc analysis so basically what happens in abc analysis is it gives you control over the inventory its distribution system uh, this method is also called as inventory control uh, selective inventory control or sic now this method of management divides the items into three categories a b and c where a is the most important item and c is the least valuable item okay so if you look at abc inventory we are dividing like i said we are dividing the items into three uh, parts we have item a in abc model items a are about the goods that have the highest value in terms of annual uh, consumption so annual consumption is the cost of uh, the material multiplied by the amount it is consumed so under uh, abc analysis a good uh, a items are the goods that have the highest value of annual consumption it is interesting to note that the top 70 to 80 percent of the yearly consumption value of the company comes from only about 10 to 20 percent of these items okay so these are only 20 percent of the items but to cap you know they cost about the 70 or to 80 percent of the uh, total cost so these items are therefore very costly and they're sure therefore they are categorized as item a now item b are the items with medium consumption and medium value so these amount to about 30 percent of the total inventory and about 15 to 20 percent of the total annual consumption value then we have item c these items are placed in this uh, the items that are placed in this category have the lowest consumption value so they are uh, the smallest items which cost only about five percent of maybe annual consumption value but it is about covers about 50 to 60 percent of your uh, inventory items so these are your items see these could be smaller items for example in manufacturing uh, plant it could be screws it could be nails it could be bolts so okay, these items are not that costly but they are required in a huge quantity so these are nothing but your item c okay so now we'll look at the uses of abc analysis the abc analysis is widely used in supply chain management and stock checking and inventory system and is implemented as a cycle counting system so basically abc analysis uh, is useful in supply chain management because we understand which amount which material is to be bought when uh, we understand how to spend money item a is very costly item c is very less so how are we spending this money all these things can be slipped through abc analysis uh, it keeps the working capital available for use rather than keeping it tied in unhealthy inventory so for example item a you know it is very costly and you require it very less maybe like i said it requires only about 10 to 20 percent of your annual inventory so if you buy a large amount of item a your uh, what you're doing is you're tying up your capital your capital is you know you're spending a lot of money on it and it's no use so rather than that if you keep it at uh, if you buy a lower quantity of item a your capital will be free to buy other items as well it maintains control over high value goods like i said and helps them to keep a track of all those items that we have at a particular time uh, it brings order to a reordering process and ensures that those items are in stock to meet the demand so reordering whenever you order you are again ordering certain items you know you understand it when do you require it when are you buying it what is the amount you require through this abc analyst what are the advantages of it so this method helps the business to maintain control over costly items which have large amount of capital investment in them just as we discussed right now it also provides a method to madness of keeping track of all the inventory you know it helps you to understand where your inventory is and it keeps a track of all your inventories the abc method makes sure that the stock turnover ratio is maintained at comparatively higher level through a systematic control of inventory so your inventory is at a higher level than the required production rate 
uh, the stock the storage expenses are cut down considerably using this tool so storing again requires a cost we are going to see that what are carrying costs what are inventory costs but storing any material so you require to spend it spend uh, a lot of amount on maybe warehousing rent rentals to warehouses or godowns or if you own them you require to you know use uh, personnel you require to use people to uh, sort the items inspect the items store it loading it unloading it all these are you called as storage expenses so these storage expenses are cut down if you know the proper amount of material that is to be bought uh, it also provides uh there has a provision to have enough c category stocks to be maintained without compromising on more important items so once you know that which cost which items are least cost items that is item c you can buy them in bulk without actually compromising money on more uh important items like item a so that are the those are the advantages the few disadvantages that it has is for this method to work it there must be proper standardization of place standardization in place for materials in store so whatever your materials are required in store you have to you know properly standardize them you have to understand which material is a which material is b which material is c uh, if there is any uh, miscalculation in that the system will fail uh, it requires good system of coding materials that is already in operation so some material may already be in operation you have to understand them uh, and you know you have to categorize them properly whether they are a b or c and since this analysis takes into consideration the monetary value of items it ignores other factors that may be more important for your business for example an item c okay it is you are dividing that item into third category because it is lower cost uh, but that item may not actually be available at all time okay so that is why you may require to buy it in bulk okay so those things are not considered in abc analysis abc analysis only considers monetary value of items so those are the disadvantages uh, with this we'll finish off we'll stop here for the first video uh, in the next video what we'll do is we'll uh, look into the basics of inventory policies uh, we'll look at cost components of inventory and then we'll look at a concept called as economic order quantity uh, until then, uh, stay safe at your homes. Please do not venture out and we'll continue next time. Thank you.